this just kind of came to mind. Like one of my problems, you know, in my life has been that I'll like get into, like Cameron said, like exercise and dieting. And that's all I talk about, all I think about, all I expect other people to talk about. You know, it's like just takes over everything. You know, I start my own company and that is exactly like that's life, you know. But I think there's some balance that has to play into that. You know, I agree. There are some healthy, obsess- it's okay. I think it is healthy to obsess about something or s- some things. You know, it's healthy to obsess about having success and, and being successful in your marriage, your job, those type of things. Um, but you've got to find that balance there. You know, like you want to be successful in your career, but you also have a family and other responsibilities that you got to take care of. So there's a balance there, you know, like you got to figure that out. And with balance, I have to constantly remind myself that even though I have the, I feel like this is a healthy obsession and that this is going to benefit me, I still have other responsibilities, other goals in my life that need attention too. You know, there's people in my life that need attention and, and you know, like I have to incorporate balance in every aspect of my life and, and I gotta be really careful when it comes to my obsessions mm-hmm. yeah. that I exercise that balance. Well you were telling us about a, a, a diet campaign that you went on and how <laughs> that's a uh, kinda... yeah. Yeah, like I went on this this uh and this was years ago. It was like my first attempt at a diet when I was at my heaviest. Right. And I remember just obsessing about it and everybody had to eat at the restaurant that I, you know, like we could only eat at certain restaurants because I had to have this healthy food, you know. I was so obsessed about it, you know, like I'd go to people's homes and I would take my own food with me, you know, I was so obsessed about it. And it kind of made them feel uncomfortable almost. I get it. You know, yeah. and, and so I don't know, like, for it, but it worked for me. Like I dropped a lot of weight really quick, it's, but I, I don't know how healthy that yeah, is, I you know. Yeah, I feel like that's such a tricky area because like, you you want to like hold to your own standards and you want to be sure but you also want to be you know respectful of the situation that you're in and mindful of like you know i should be able to just come to an event like this and maybe not have to be so obsessed about what it is i'm after in this mm-hmm. one instance but also why can't i also like still strive to meet my goals even though i'm in this particular situation right so yeah, that's, that's tricky. Like, especially when it comes to something like weight loss or food specifically, because I think it's hard to know. Like, I too have been in that situation where I'm so obsessed over, you know, losing weight and meeting those goals that I'll take food with me. I'll, you know, make it a point to, to mention that I, you know, would like to have a certain food there or, or whatever the case is. And it's hard to know like where the line is. And oftentimes for me, like what I find beneficial is to really sort of gauge, to gauge um, my response to it if it's not a possibility. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right. <clears throat> it's like, how am I responding if like I'm not able to take whatever I want? If I'm not able to do this and I'm not able to to meet that obsession in my mind, then how does that make me feel emotionally? And it's like, you know what, I can probably just step back from that situation and say, I'm a little bit too obsessed about this. It's fine if I do this or if I do this a little bit differently than what I had in my mind, right? Because obsession to me sort of just feels like another element of control. Okay. Right? Like it's it's just a, another another way for me to think that I may have control over something that really I'm powerless over, you know, mm-hmm. in certain instances. And I think that a lot of times for me, when I think about like whether it's a good obsession or whether it's a bad obsession, or I have to think about the thought that is driving the obsession. Is it a good thought or is it a bad thought? Like, am I obsessed over losing weight because I look horrible? Mm -hmm. Or am I obsessed over losing weight because by God damn it, I'm 40 and I want to be healthy? I, I, I have a child coming and I want to be, you know, healthy and loving for that child mm-hmm. and be a good example and, you know, all these things. Or is it just because 
I just look fucking awful and I fucking hate myself and I, fu- you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So like, depending on the thought that is driving that obsession can usually help me determine too, like whether it's good or bad. It's okay. Okay. Kind of my thinking. Do you guys feel like sometimes you get static for your obsessions from other people? Well, we were we were talking before the show, and, and I'm trying to remember, like, you know, because Cameron mentioned, like, I don't think I've obsessed for a long time. And then I'm like, oh, yeah, everything I do is a health journey. <laughs> Right. Yeah. (laughs) And uh, I'm pretty much obsessed with self improvement. Mm -hmm. True. You know, I pretty much. If I wasn't, I definitely would not be living the life that I am. Yeah. And then everybody around you is like, oh, God, not again. Like, we got to hear this shit again. I get get a lot of that. Like, so, yes, you know, a lot of times we'll we'll push that um, obsession on other people. And that's where, like, you know, getting people to do drugs for the first time against, like, their better Mm -hmm. judgment, you know, because. You know, peer pressure or something like that. Like, like with, as you guys know, like, like our our eating patterns inside my home are really un-American stand, yeah, standards are. of. They are, and it be, it seems a little bit normal within my circle, mm-hmm. right? But in in large, like, we don't eat fast food. We don't eat grains. We don't bring candy and and shit into our house, like. Like if we do have like a an ice cream bar or something like that, it will be a dairy free, sugar you know no sugar added something from the natural you know like it's really super healthy and and it's gotten to the point where like it feels like my family doesn't want me around because it's just uncomfortable for them yeah right and when you're on when you're on a really um, determined path or obsessed path with other things in mind with 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 the benefit of not just yourself but everyone around you in mind a lot of times what i find is that not everybody is enjoying your obsession right Right. a lot of times a lot of times Mm -hmm. especially with healthy obsessions people want to be left in their uh bliss right and unfortunately like i'm not in a place where that works for me you know like i i it's so hard for me to to just allow people to be unhealthy and negative when I have like substantial evidence to show that this could change, Mm -hmm. you know, but, um, I, I definitely agree that like our obsessions aren't always well received, right? Like they're not, Mm -hmm. no, they aren't. They're not, they aren't. And not everybody wants what you want. Yeah. Or not everybody wants what I want, you know? And, and I am certainly, uh, no like, like, I'm not the best determiner for what's best for you. Right. Even though I can get obsessed on what I think is mm-hmm. best for you. Mm-hmm. Sure, yeah, and that's a very good point, right? Is like, like, somebody may tell me what they are obsessed over, and I just go, okay. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> if that's what you want to do, like, <laughs> makes no sense to me. Sure. But then let me tell you what I'm obsessed about, by the yeah. way. And they could be thinking the same thing. Yeah, exactly. Like, what? Exactly. Yeah. You know? But like, the, the and the point of that would be that, you know, I feel like maybe a key component to obsession, like since we're talking about obsession kind of broadly, like negative and positive obsession, is sort of not giving a fuck what anybody else thinks about it, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I'm so obsessed over it that I don't care that you're going to look at me funny if I bring my own food to your event. Yes. You that know? would. I think that would be a positive one. But right. But also, like, I don't give a fuck. I'm so obsessed over drinking and using there you go. that I will show up to your event drunk. Drunk. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, so it, it goes both ways, right? Like, there are positive things to it. Mm-hmm. Like, I can take it in a positive way, but I, I can also, you know, use it in a negative way. But it seems to be sort of a key component or at least one of the things that, that obsession that exist within obsession is that disregard for the other person's feelings about it. Uh-huh. You know? mm-hmm. And that's probably okay that that's a big part of being obsessed. Like I need to not give a fuck. Otherwise I'm not going to allow myself to get <laughs> obsessed over it. Yeah. You know what I mean?